Cyberpunk 2077. Ladies and gentlemen, we finally made it. The hype for this game was immeasurable. I mean, we are talking about the company that made The Witcher 3, which is personally one of my favorite games of all time and arguably the best of the current generation. Then you throw on Keanu Reeves and yeah, the hype was crazy. In fact, it was so hyped that this game could probably be the best video game ever and it still wouldn't reach people's expectations. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy around this game. A lot of people are calling it a huge disappointment, others are saying it's a masterpiece, and others just think it needed more time to be properly polished. I do want to make it clear that I did play this game on PC, and from the videos I've seen, it seems like the PC version and console versions are completely different games. And I fully realize the performance and graphical issues. I mean, I truly feel for you guys, and maybe you should have just used all your life savings to get a PC, and this wouldn't be a problem for you. In all seriousness though, the game is by no means perfect on PC either. It's definitely better, but there's still some large issues, especially if you don't have a really good PC. Anyways, now that I've really taken my time to play and fully understand and enjoy everything Cyberpunk has to offer, I'm going to break down the game, the good, the not so good, and the ugly, so strap in everybody. <laughs> What better place to start than the source of all the backlash, the presentation and performance? Cyberpunk graphics wise offers a lot of the fancy new features in the next gen games like ray tracing and DLSS. Now my PC specs are an RTX 2070 Super and i5 9600K overclocked at 5.0 GHz. Now I realize my PC isn't the highest of the high ends and I don't have a 3080 or anything like that but I'd still say it's pretty decent and I've been able to run games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla and even watch Watch Dogs Legion at 1440p in ultra settings while staying well above 60 FPS. Now Cyberpunk was a little all over the place for me. I originally tried to run the game with ray tracing on and DLSS set to balanced. I mean, it was just so blurry and the frame rate felt so choppy that I just decided to turn ray tracing off and everything immediately felt way smoother. Ray tracing does look really great in the game, but unless you have a god tier PC, I wouldn't recommend it because it absolutely murders your frame rate. With every setting set to either high, ultra, and psycho at 1440p with ray tracing off and DLSS set to balance, the frame rates were pretty smooth. In the city with lots of traffic and that of the sorts on screen, I was getting around 60 to 70 FPS. Then in more secluded areas or inside buildings, it was a nice smooth 90 to 110 FPS. I'm personally one of those people who prefers the high frame rate as opposed to graphics, so I really think it was worth turning ray tracing off. And the game still looks fantastic, so it all worked out well. If you are playing or or planning to get this game on PC, make sure to use DLSS. It is an absolute frame rate savior in this game. Just turning it on to balanced gave me a solid 30 to 40 FPS increase and there wasn't much of a drop in visual quality. It can get kind of blurry at times, but with it set to balanced, I really didn't notice any issues or blurriness. I did get quite a few frame drops and stuttering when driving through the more populated areas of the city and some weird stability issues in some areas. Like I said, the game's performance is really all over the place and pretty unstable. One minute you could be getting 100 FPS and the next 50, so be warned. If you don't have a decent gaming PC, it's going to be a real struggle to run this game, and I'd definitely say you need to wait for more optimization and fine tuning before you even consider trying the game if you have a lower end PC. Now if you're on console, well, <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna show a few pictures, so um... Yeah, as, as you can see, this is some pretty next-gen level graphics right here if we were still in the year 1995. If you somehow own a next-gen console, first of all, congrats. And second, the game will run better than the current gen. I didn't say good, I said better. However, the game is locked in the current gen graphics, so all your fancy new features, yeah, you can forget about those. Imagine buying one of the few next gen consoles just to be locked to the same graphics and performance options as your old friends here. I find it pretty ridiculous and quite honestly pathetic that people who just bought these new consoles have to wait until sometime in 2021 just to run the game at its full potential, especially when said game has been in development for nearly 
nine years and had multiple delays and promises to have the game ready. So honestly, if you're on an Xbox Series X or PS5, I personally wait until that next gen upgrade comes out. You also likely won't have to deal with all the bugs by then. And man, the bugs are by far the most disappointing thing to me personally about this game. In the first few hours, I really didn't have too many issues and I didn't know what everyone was raging on about, but then they started to come and these bugs came in bunches, ladies and gentlemen. They came in all shapes and sizes in just about every way imaginable. We're talking about lighting issues, flickering, invisible NPCs, characters talking over each other, getting stuck in the floor and walls, characters spazzing out, cars and people flying or vanishing out of thin air, enemies T-posing, enemies not shooting or moving, some not even spawning in. I think you get it. Most of these bugs were just annoying and flat out ridiculous and a lot of them weren't necessarily game breaking but they were just really immersion breaking and could kill the experience in some moments and just caused me a lot of frustration. I mean this one bug I got, I literally walked into a nightclub where people were dancing and rocking out to absolute silence and for some reason people were scared and yelling like there was a shooter. And the guy I was supposed to talk to, he was invisible so I had to keep reloading the mission until he finally popped up. Surprisingly, I only had one crash during my entire playthrough which is a miracle because from what I heard on both PC and console that is a big issue. For PC, I'm just guessing it's specific to the kind of hardware you're rocking in your PC. I honestly never expected this many bugs and issues from a company like CD Projekt Red, a company known for taking their time with games and putting out quality over quantity. I mean, even Witcher 3 was buggy on its launch, but it was nowhere near this scale. I expect this kind of stuff from companies like Ubisoft and EA, but not CD. I mean, even Assassin's Creed Valhalla was a lot less buggy than this game, and that's saying a lot, considering one was worked on for two years with no delays, and the other was worked on for nine years with three or four delays. It's clear CD Projekt Red needed and wanted to take more time with this game to get everything ironed out, but they probably felt a bit pressured just to get the game out because of all the criticism they were getting from delaying it in the first place. If you're one of those people who likes to wait a few months or even a year before buying these games, then you're a genius. And if I didn't want to make a review, then I would be doing the same thing as you because the game is probably a much more enjoyable and smooth experience in a few months. Maybe I'll even do a re-review of it in the future when all these bugs and performance issues are fixed. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. Bottom line is, if you have a really good PC and are just too excited for the game and really just need to play it, then the performance shouldn't be a big bother for you. It's just something you're gonna have to accept. If you're on a lower end PC or on the current generation of consoles, then you may want to wait for more patches and optimizations. Now, as disappointing as all the bugs and optimization issues are, I'm just going to flat out say that Night City is truly one of the best open worlds I have played in a video game, ever. That is a pretty bold claim, but it is just that good. The level of immersion you get and feel when you're doing something as simple as walking in an alley or on the side of the roads is breathtaking. There are just tons and tons of NPCs either driving the streets or roaming the sidewalks, and it just feels like the real deal. You can notice all the different things like the huge variety and diversity in people, clothing, implants, and vehicles. Just walking the streets, something you can really feel and hear is that noisy city bustle. You city people know what I'm talking about. Cars honk honking and passing by, people mumbling and walking, you can even catch a few interesting conversations between random NPCs. You may even run into some gang members or policemen talking about a job or something that just happened. It's all incredibly fascinating and CD Projekt Red just really nailed the atmosphere with Night City. And I am so glad they decided to make the game in first person because it just makes it feel much more immersive. Night City does a great job of making you feel like an extremely tiny part of its massive looking world. Night City really isn't all that huge, especially compared to some of the open worlds we get nowadays, but the city just feels so densely packed and tall that it makes it feel like a living and breathing city. I'll never forget that first moment I walked out of the apartment and onto the sidewalk and just looked up and saw these towering skyscrapers. It makes you feel so small and insignificant, and if you've ever walked on the sidewalk of a large city in real life, it's a very similar feeling and definitely the closest I've ever felt to that feeling in a video game. Not to mention the futuristic cyberpunk 
vibe of the city, which CD absolutely nailed. The cars are probably the most notable. They all look really cool and unique with tons of detail and futuristic tech incorporated in them. The fashion is also really cool and detailed. Some people look like the Terminator, others are made of solid chrome, and some just have these super crazy and deadly looking implants, which is applicable to your own character as well. The world also has a really nice day and night cycle where you can see Night City in all its phases, and whether it's the golden skies reflecting off all the buildings and roads in the morning, or all the neon and LED lights beaming from the buildings in the darkness of the night. It's extremely beautiful to just roam around and admire, not to mention some great rain effects that make the city look more dynamic and gives a larger feeling of realness to it. Even when driving in the car, you have that car radio that plays some disturbing news stories going on in Night City that may actually be related to the events going on in the story as you progress, along with a lot of futuristic cyberpunk music. In terms of content, Night City is just as strong and chock full of lots of things to do. There are things like random events that usually involve some gangs or criminals attacking or robbing people, or a crime scene the police are investigating, and sometimes you'll just stumble upon a rogue cyber psycho that has just slaughtered dozens of innocent people, and you've got to take them out before you're next. You may even come across some mysterious people like a prophet or some guy who's trying to rip you off for a brain dance. There's just so many little random events going on and small tasks and things you can do that even when you're not in a mission, you still have so much to explore. And again, that's not even including the gigs and side jobs of the game, in which there are a lot of. The gigs are these brief contracts you get from a local fixer in which you usually have to head to a location, kill a few thugs, and either steal or recover something and you get some nice and easy money. The gigs are quick, but still a lot of fun and there's some pretty cool moments with them, especially since they all have different decisions and choices you can make that change how the gig may end. Then there are the side jobs, which is the equivalent to the secondary quest from Witcher 3 and do not be fooled by the name, the side jobs in Cyberpunk 2077 are some of the most intricate and in-depth side missions I've ever played in a video game and they are extremely enjoyable, arguably more so than the main jobs. The side jobs have these often long and intriguing story threads in which you usually get to learn more about and understand a lot of the characters you meet in the main story. There's a good six characters or so you meet in the main jobs that you will then get to do three or four side jobs with and really get to know them and help them with all their own personal issues and quarrels. And these missions can actually heavily impact the main jobs and will come into play later and even affect your ending of the game. So it is absolutely necessary that you play these side jobs and get to learn more about all these cool and exciting characters because otherwise you're just missing out and the main story won't have as big as an impact on you. The character creator in Cyberpunk 2077 is great and has lots of depth, options, detail, and freedom to it. Almost a little too much, if you ask me. I do like how you can really make your character your own, however, and make them look as decked out as possible with all the implants and crazy futuristic enhancements you can get. The ability to create your own build is also very cool and is great to have. I don't feel it was done as well as other RPGs, but I did really enjoy it and it gave me more freedom in the kind of playstyle I have and how I wanted to play the game. I'm a big fan of stealth games and with this build system I was able to make my character very strong and get all the cool upgrades for stealth to make the experience more fun and in-depth in stealth situations. But really this build system supports all playstyles. You can also upgrade body which increases health and allows you to inflict more damage in open combat which is great for those who prefer to skip stealth and just go guns blazing. You can also put points into intelligence, reflexes, and technical ability where you can get things like faster ADS time, quicker, and more hacking options, etc. Another thing that I found really cool about the builds is that if you have enough of a certain skill upgraded, you can unlock special dialogue options that can help you out in dialogue, along with unlocking shortcuts and special abilities in missions. For example, if you have cool upgraded enough, in some missions you can defuse a situation and avoid bloodshed by choosing the cool dialogue option. Or if you need to get through a locked or reinforced door, you can just straight up force it open if you have the body skill upgraded enough. Now I wish 
wish upgrading each certain skill did a little bit more and had more unique features to it because really every time you upgrade a certain skill it is only doing things like increasing stealth damage by 10% or for body you're basically just increasing your health every time. The abilities you can actually acquire in each skill are much better and can actually unlock things like throwing knives or the ability to sprint while reloading or get a slow motion camera when you're being spotted. Cool little mechanics and features like that and I do wish there were a bit more of these because by the time I finished the game there weren't many cool abilities left to acquire and I kind of just spent the ability points randomly because it didn't matter as much. The gunplay in Cyberpunk was a pleasant surprise for me though. I found the gunplay really smooth and quite enjoyable, especially with all the different weapons and all the unique features. Cyberpunk's gunplay is basically a first person looter shooter, which I'm not a huge fan of and it can get boring after a while, but I think there was enough special weapons like the smart rifles and power weapons that added more variety and spiced up the combat as I progressed through the game. Being able to shoot an assault rifle off of a metal surface and have it ricochet and end up headshotting your enemy was really cool and such a unique thing to have in a game. There's also some weapons that have their own literal aimbot like the pistol Skippy that will automatically lock onto your target's head and the bullets will follow the target like a tracking missile. It is really cool and it made the combat really enjoyable at times. I also personally really love the snipers in the game. They were really strong and the only real consistent weapon that could one-shot enemies, which made them super satisfying and brutal to use. Not to mention the pretty cool weapon customization where you can add different scopes and even suppressors so you could use the weapons in stealth as well. You can even put different modifications on the weapons that do things like increase weapon damage or bullet velocity, just adding even more customization and personalization with each of your weapons. And I haven't even mentioned all the different implants you can get, which is one of my favorite parts about this game and is what makes it so unique. You can head to any ripper dock on the map and buy all these cool implants for your character that add tons of features and benefits. You can get mantis arms, so you basically have two swords for arms and can just rip people apart. You can also get things like supercharged legs, so you can do a double jump or a charged jump, and you can get different biochips that unlock more hacking options and capabilities. The implants are just so cool, and I really enjoyed looking through all of them and building the ultimate killing machine for the harsh and dangerous Night City terrain. Which brings me to what I want to talk about next, and that is the stealth. Now from the beginning, the stealth can come off as very basic and nothing too special. When I first played a stealth mission, it pretty much felt like a first person version of Watch Dogs where you can go up to enemies and take them down along with using hacks to distract and locate them. The hacking is actually a lot more in depth compared to Watch Dogs and you have a lot more options giving you tons of creative freedom to take down your enemies. You can do things like cause their synapses to overload and make enemies explode or inducing a cyber psychosis on a robot and having it kill all the enemies for you. There's just a lot you can do and I loved it. You can also just do things the good old fashioned way and go up to enemies, grab them, snap their necks, or just knock them out and hide the body. There isn't an actual difference if you kill or knock out. There's no XP bonus or anything, which would have been cool to have, but the non-lethal is really just there so you can take out targets who need to be kept alive for mission purposes. But there's also some stealth gadgets like throwing knives or suppressed weapons that give you so many options and a lot of creative freedom while in stealth. If you need a really good example of this, go check out Stealth Gamer BR. Some of the plays that guy can make in this game is ridiculous and it just looks so awesome and that's thanks to the broad range of stealth weapons and tools you have at your disposal causing cyberpunk to be much more of a stealth game than i really expected and i found it really enjoyable it pretty much reminded me of the stealth from the far cry series but with cool implants and hacks to give it even more depth variety and creativity which brings me to the last part of the gameplay i would like to talk about and that is the driving i had very high hopes for driving in this game especially with all the different cars and just how cool it was but overall i was pretty disappointed by it the handling of the cars themselves is okay a mouse and keyboard with wasd it is quite challenging and the mini map is so zoomed in that it makes it really hard to see and anticipate turns until you're like right there so it made it really challenging to go full speed and then make a sharp turn and i often ended up going right past the turn or completely missing it because you are given no time window at all thanks to the mini map you can drive in both first and third person and while driving in first person is cool cool and more immersive, you can hardly see anything, especially since you don't have any mirrors, so driving in third person was just a lot easier. I think one quick thing worth mentioning for you PC players as well, is that you may find it better to actually play this game on controller. The driving is much easier on controller, and for some stupid reason, CD Projekt Red decided to make it so that to dodge, you have to double tap W, A, S, or D in the direction you want to dodge, which was extremely frustrating because I would often do it on accident at the wrong times, unless 
just say it caused me to get spotted and ruined my perfect stealth runs a lot. And there isn't even an option to remap the dodge and the key binding, so I had to manually go into the game files and disable it, which is pretty annoying to deal with. Cyberpunk 2077 has a very engaging and unique story. You play as V, a mercenary in Night City, and after a heist goes wrong, you end up with a biochip stuck in your head that holds the personality construct of the late Johnny Silverhand. Now before you start the game, you will be given an option of what life path you want your character V to be. Each life path is quite different and can drastically change your start and some of the choices in the game. In fact, they even made a whole guide on all the different life paths and all their advantages and differences. I personally chose the Nomad life path, and truth be told, I was a little disappointed with how quick and insignificant the life path intro was. I was expecting some lengthy prologue starting out in the Badlands as a Nomad, and then after a few missions, finally going to Night City, but that was just not the case at all. In the introduction mission, you are already moving to cross the border from the Badlands to Night City, and in total, the whole life path intro was only like 20 minutes. I looked at the intros for both Street Kid and Corpo as well, and they were very similar in length and content wise, and the life path choice really doesn't have as big as an impact as I expected it to. And really the only time it comes into play later in the story is when it gives you a few extra dialogue options when you're talking to a character who is the same life path as you. For example, since I was a nomad, I got extra dialogue options with Pan Am and the Aldecados since they were also nomads and I could relate to them. And there are equivalents of this for both Corpos and Street Kids as well. Now in terms of V as a protagonist and main character, I really really didn't find him anything special. In fact, it's really hard to describe him as a character since pretty much every dialogue option is a choice. And how he acts is completely reliant on you, which is great for making the character feel more connected and personalized to you, but it isn't great for making a strong and defining main character presence. Some of the dialogue options don't often actually have V say what they said it would, and the tone V uses for some of the options isn't exactly how I wanted to say it. And that's why having a defining and well-known and liked character like Geralt from the Witcher series is a lot more enjoyable and entertaining to play and speak as compared to V, who we really don't know a whole lot about or truly understand. However, the supporting cast and side characters is where this game's story shines. Act 1 of the game was one of the most engaging and entertaining first acts to an open world RPG I played, and that's because the side characters are great. Jackie, V's best friend and partner, is a really entertaining and charming companion, and does a great job of introducing you to the game and keeping you connected to the story. And there's so many fantastic and interesting characters like Jackie that really flesh the game out with all its different story threads. Another big character that we all know and is acted by the man himself, Keanu Reeves, is Johnny Silverhand. I loved how Johnny Silverhand was portrayed in this game and I think Keanu Reeves absolutely nailed it. The dynamic between Silverhand and V from the get-go is so entertaining and often hilarious, as Silverhand is always being that judgy and annoying smartass in V's head. The constant bickering and teasing between the two characters was awesome and how their relationship grows and progresses through the story is really cool. You also learn a bit about Johnny Silverhand's past and how he died and you get to learn more about him and see his character develop and become more than just a total douchebag. And again, like I mentioned earlier, you will be introduced to a lot of side characters through the main story that you will then have three or four side missions with so you can really learn, understand, and develop a bond with them that can affect your main story and even the ending. And all of these storylines are just just all so diverse and different. Standout ones for me were acquiring Delamain's rogue, self-driving taxis that all have their different and creepy personalities, or exploring a city that had been completely flooded like Atlantis. There are just so many different things and stories and characters to connect and invest in, and it all ties together really nicely with the main story. Not to mention the huge amount of choices. If you thought The Witcher 3 had lots of choices and different endings, Cyberpunk takes it to a whole other level. It's so crazy in-depth that even some of the smallest decisions you make in the beginning can actually have a big impact later on in the game. You are really crafting and building your own ending from the start, and that's a really freeing and powerful feeling to have in a video game. There are six different endings for Cyberpunk 2077, and each one is vastly different. Like seriously, I was absolutely shocked with some of the decisions the game forces you to make and how differently the game can end for you. There are so many big moments where you have to make a huge decision, and if you're a very indecisive person, 
person like myself, it may take you minutes to think carefully through the impacts and consequences of each choice since you really want to get a good and satisfying ending. I'm obviously not going to spoil the endings, but I will just say I really enjoyed the one I got and I thought it was really cool how I could decide, well, everything. Now this brings us to the big question, should you buy Cyberpunk? As many of you may have heard, Sony pulled Cyberpunk off the PlayStation Store, so you can't even buy it right now for PlayStation even if you wanted to. And honestly, I'd even tell PC players to wait before buying the game, and if you're on Xbox, you should 100% wait. I don't really think much explanation is needed for why console players shouldn't be buying Cyberpunk right now, I mean, just look at it. But I believe PC players should also wait a few months for just more bug fixes and optimization patches before picking up the game. Because under all these bugs and issues is a really great game and I still really enjoyed it, but I 100% wish I could have waited a few months to play it when the game is a lot smoother and more polished so I could experience the game at its full potential. And who knows, a few months from now the game may even have had some sales if CD Projekt Red is really desperate enough, especially after the game completely flopped on consoles. So if you have to choose between buying the game on PC right now and its current state for $60, or buying it in a few months when it's all smoothed over and bug free for an even cheaper price, then it is not a question that you should absolutely choose to wait. Trust me, you really won't be missing out on too much, and there are plenty of other open world games that came out this year that can keep you company if you're just looking for a fun open world to put some time to. Or you could even pick up some other open world games that came out within the past few years that you haven't gotten the chance to play yet. I've made a lot of retrospective reviews for games like Witcher 3, Ghost Recon, Far Far Cry, Hitman, etc. And there's so many good games out there that can hold you over, especially Witcher 3 if you really want a game similar to Cyberpunk with all the different choices and the huge sense of open world freedom. Anyway, that just about does it for my thoughts on Cyberpunk 2077. I hope you console players actually get to experience a polished version of this game because it truly is a great game underneath all its current issues and who knows, maybe everything will be smoothed over by the time the next gen version drops. If you guys have more to add or disagree with anything I said, please feel free to say so down in the comments. If you found this review enjoyable or helpful, you can thank me by leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel. We are going for 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year, so I would really appreciate that. If you want to discuss Cyberpunk or any other games with me and others, feel free to join my community Discord server, the link is in the description. Other than that, have a great day and stay stealthy assassins.